Oh my god, he didn't just do that. He murdered a pencil in front of me. This Listen. is probably how he got good at drawing, and I am not knocking him down for that. But I'm just saying that if I was to do that, I would I would have never been able to get to this point. So there's eight different skills that go into this drawing. Okay. I started how to learn how to draw and why you should learn or why you should. I started to draw when I was in my late thirties. I didn't go to art school. I just bought a couple of instructional books and I started out <laughs> and it was kind of a disaster. The first drawing I did was pretty bad. So was the second. And it seemed like I just had no ability to draw at all. And I almost gave up. Maybe this has happened to you and you're despairing of ever getting any good at drawing. Honestly, this never really happened to me. I just kept doing it. I didn't even think about whether I was getting better or not. I was just extraordinarily bored. And then I just ended up pulling out one of these babies. Look at that. Yeah, I ended up, uh, this is what boredom will get you to. Like if you're bored enough, this is what you can end up with. All right, um, let's go back to the video. Let me give you some reassurance. Oh, and by the way, yeah, I did draw that, okay? Just in case I wasn't clear enough, I did draw this, okay? I have a very, very absolutely cartoony style, so. And some tips. You can learn to draw. I know this because I learned to draw. And because I've also taught tens of thousands of other people to draw. It's a basic skill like tying your shoe or throwing a ball or driving a car. When you first learned to drive a car, you were probably pretty bad at it. Maybe you learned from your dad in the supermarket parking lot, sweating, gripping the steering wheel. A nightmare. And look at you today. You can drive any car anywhere. You're relaxed, confident, <laughs> and it feels completely natural. <laughs> What's up with the sound effects? <laughs> the same can be true of drawing. Let's start with motivation. Why do you want to draw? Huh? Maybe just because oh you always wanted to. Or maybe you have an end goal in mind to do drawings of your dog to hang in the dining room. <laughs> but there's a deeper reason for learning to draw. It can help you be more engaged with the world around you. Help you see beauty you might have missed. Express how you feel about life. Drawing can reduce stress, help you feel happy, be more creative, solve problems better. There are just so many benefits to drawing. Maybe even as many benefits as learning to drive. But at first, you can't see all that because you're struggling with some basic technical skills and you're not happy with the results, which can lead to self-sabotage. Telling yourself your drawings have to look perfect, just like photos. Anything less just proves that you suck, you have no talent, you're wasting your time. It's like you just took up jogging and you're beating yourself up because you can't win an Olympic marathon. Art can make us put insane pressure on ourselves, and we don't have to. To succeed at drawing, you just have to draw a lot. You can draw badly, and that's fine. Just keep at it. Because all this drawing is going to do something magical to your body. It's going to reconfigure your neuromuscular network. You're going to make changes to how your brain handles all that data that's coming in through your eyeballs send signal to your arm and your hands and your fingers. As you develop these connections, your drawings will become more natural and intuitive, just like driving a car. They'll become more expressive of you as a unique person. That's how your style will emerge. How do you make neurons grow? By building a habit. That doesn't mean you have to practice slogging away at boring drawing exercises for hours every day. Instead, find ways of incorporating drawing into your everyday life. Get a sketchbook and carry it around with you everywhere. Draw all the things in your life, your coffee cup, your sandwich, your napping dog, just ordinary everyday stuff. Now you might be saying, I don't know how to draw a napping dog. Yeah, if, okay, hang on a second. Like, I, I think this is good like i like listening to this because i already know how to draw but what about the person who doesn't know how to draw already like they're probably frustrated they probably don't want to like listen to this stuff they want to know what the secret is and what 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 you got to do let me see what some of the people are thinking let me see that's really inspiring in my in my 30s myself 
and starting to draw having not done any art since high school i've been seeing major improvements after just a few months and your videos have been a great way to keep the motivation up i still really i'm still really bad but i can see that badness decreasing a little every time i take a swing at it thank you for making these videos they help a lot no drawing tips or tricks no clickbait title yet an extremely powerful drawing video exactly what i need thank you <sighs> i mean i guess but like i remember one time i ended up finding this drawing video where like somebody was like talking about like i wish i could just find like the perfect like tutorial because nobody really knows how to teach it and i agree with that not a lot of people know how to teach it now i'm not saying that i could teach it better but i do understand what i'm doing and what i'm drawing like for instance right now Actually, I'm gonna I'm 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 go over this drawing right now. I'm gonna tell you what, what I see that a lot of people don't see. So luckily I have that drawing as my wallpaper. Otherwise, uh, I'd probably be talking nonsense. All right, let's finish watching the video. Or sandwich for that matter. And also, why do I want drawings of coffee cups and sandwiches? Stick with me. There are a couple of reasons to do this. First, learning to draw is mainly a matter of drawing a lot to grow neurons. There aren't magic tricks and shortcuts, no matter what certain YouTube videos might promise you, but you can do it. And second, you learn by making mistakes. Every drawing is just a series of challenges and problems that you work through. Yeah, but how do you work on those problems when you don't even know that you have a problem? Third, believe that you can get there and you will. You don't need talent just need to keep making drawings, even bad ones, even bad ones of tuna sandwiches. Speaking of, one of the many things that beginners struggle with is subject matter. Because when we look at what professional artists make art about, we figure those are the things that we're supposed to make art about too. Portraits, landscapes, still lives of bowls of fruit. Yo, that, that one looks sick. Assume that there are special skills and tools that you need for doing each of these things sorts of drawings. We just need to take step-by-step -step lessons in how to draw portraits of fruit. Here's a more effective approach. Learn to draw everything. Draw the stuff in your life. Just carry your sketchbook with you and whenever you have a spare moment, pull it out and draw anything that's nearby. Keep things relevant and interesting to you. I I cannot do that, man. As a person who was drawing, I that that would be absolutely uninspiring to me and boring to me. Like I'm not. This is probably how he got good at drawing, and I am not knocking him down for that. But I'm just saying that if I was to do that, I would I would have never been able to get to this point where I'm drawing what I want, you know? Because like I don't want to be drawing shoes. I don't want to be drawing envelopes. I don't want to draw houses. I want to draw cartoon characters. I want to draw graffiti letters because that's what I'm highly interested in. You know, so I, I don't know about this tip right here, but I mean, if, if it really, if you really need to do that, then by all means, it's just that for me, like I, I just can't do that. That way you'll keep doing it. Waiting for a bus? Draw a trash can. Or... I've never drawn any of these things. I've drawn shoes because I, I need to draw shoes for my characters, but never like a soda can or or any other thing like a fire hydrant. I've never needed to buy a, uh, to 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 draw a fire hydrant. I've never even drawn one, but I'm pretty sure I can draw one in my cartoony stuff if I wanted to, because all of the things I've already done with my art, I I can translate that into objects that I've never done before. For the lamp post, sitting in the waiting room, draw a stack of magazines. Uh potted plant, the receptionist's shoes, it really doesn't matter. The more kinds of things you draw, the more confident you'll feel that you can draw anything. Because the secret is, you draw it all pretty much the same way. I, I don't know. Again, like, you know, like I've never drawn buildings. I've never drawn any of that stuff. And I still feel pretty confident that I can draw a building really nice. I feel confident that I could draw a chicken really nice, even though I've never drawn a chicken. I'm confident that I can draw so many things that I've never drawn before because I know that if I can draw a cartoon character, most likely I can draw a chicken or whatever animal or whatever inanimated object because I just, I have the skills for it. There's a skill that can help you draw all of this stuff. So I'm going to go over it right now. Just Drawing is basically a universal skill set, lines, angles, curves. It's this rich language that can be used to say anything. It's like a skeleton key that will unlock any subject. 
And you learn it by slowing down, by looking intelligently, and by translating what you're seeing into lines. There's so many benefits to carrying a sketchbook with you everywhere. You're learning to draw, building neurons. You're making a record of your life. You're living your life more intensely. Because as you look intensely, you're also recording those observations into your brain. You're creating much more vivid experiences and memories. And when you slow down to draw, you're doing the same thing that you do when you meditate or yoga or pray. You're focusing your mind. You're quieting all these other voices in your head. And you're experiencing things more intensely. Imagine if you could summon up memories from your last vacation that were like 3D immersive virtual reality recordings that include everything that you experienced in detail. Well, you will, if you keep drawing. No lie, that book that he presented, this you looks- Experienced in detail. Well, that looks pretty awesome, man. Include everything Look at that. that you experienced in detail. That looks awesome, I'm not gonna lie. That uh, lighthouse on the beach, but the next hotel, I like his handwriting. His handwriting looks like that of like a uh, greetings card or a happy birthday card. Looks pretty cool. You will, if you keep drawing. All right, let's talk supplies. All you really need to begin this process is a basic sketchbook and a pen. Make sure your sketchbook is inexpensive enough that you won't be precious about using it. It's just paper. But also make sure it's a decent quality. So you aren't frustrated by your lines showing through to the next page. Pick the right size, make sure it fits into your bag or your pocket. It's gonna be your constant companion for the next few months, it should fit you. Any pen is gonna do, but you might prefer one made especially for drawing, they're not expensive, and they're made to flow and keep their line consistent. What, hey, I'll, gi I'll give you a tip, okay? One of the things I like to do is Boom, this is my cup. I put it anywhere right here next to me. Look, I know this guy's being very quiet and I should do the same thing too, but that's not me, okay? I like to be pretty loud, okay? So I have a favorite pencil too as well. It's uh somewhere here, man. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. Right here, look at this pencil. I've had this pencil for, how, how, how long has it been already? Like almost, it's about to be almost 20. 20 years already and right now it's uh 13 years i got this one back in 2007 or 2008 i don't remember when but i've carried it ever since and this was at almost at the very beginning of when i started to draw and uh it's been with me ever since i think that if you're going to be an artist or if you're going to like do sketches or whatever get yourself a pen that you're always going to have a relationship with and like, I know this is weird, but like, I feel like I'm married to this pen. Like this pencil knows me, this lead pencil knows me. And whenever I need to make switches, that's why I got a lead pencil. Because if I ever need to make switches, I could just take out certain pieces and just replace it. I have so many, so many pieces to replace this pencil with just in case they get old, but it's been the same ever since I gotten it. So it's a, it's a 0 0.9, never regretted it. But that's what, that's one tip I would highly suggest you guys that you make a relationship with the pencil. Like you for some reason it makes you want to draw more when you have a relationship with a pencil remember there's no magic pen though there are magic markers just try them out and work your way through lots of them and why a pen you ask why not a pencil with a big juicy eraser because you want to think about making lines not erasing them what no man you want to erase them i erase all the time look um respectfully disagree okay i'm not trying to say that he's dumb or anything i think that he's very insightful okay but this is just my philosophy i think that you should erase absolutely because we all make mistakes i mean what are you trying to tell yourself that you don't make mistakes at all like i don't know like that's just kind of like the what i'm priming mean priming myself for to kind of tell myself that i don't make mistakes it's okay to make mistakes you know that's why i don't like to draw in pen i usually draw in pencil first and then i draw in pen maybe it's not the best idea but that's just how i like it I like to, I feel more comfortable when I draw like that. But I mean, what what do I know, man? I'm more of a digital artist. I'm not really like a traditional artist. I like more digital art because your your skills are amplified like by 10 times when you practice on, on a digital surface. So yeah. Commit to what you're seeing and a pen helps you to do that. Lose the training wheels, be brave. Wow, what are you trying to say, man? <laughs> you may be resisting this, but trust me, taught thousands of people to draw with a pen 
and they always end up thanking me for not letting them use a pencil. Oh my God, you didn't just do that. You murdered a pencil in front of me. Listen, um, yeah, I don't, again, I don't draw in pens. I don't care to draw in pen. I do not care. Like I know it saves time, but I just truly don't care to draw in pen. I draw in pencil. It's the best thing I've ever done. I don't need to draw in pen to like feel good or do anything. Cause I mean like, obviously like, you know, I'm very proud of my work. I love my work and I love it. So, and I don't need no pencil for that. So. I mean, no pen for that. The pencil is good. Th these are some of my favorite pens that I like to use. It's like this Vertex V5. Oh, I mean, uh, not Vertex, uh, Precise V5s. Um, I, I, I like those. Um, I draw every single time. Uh, right here, look. This folder right here. Let's take a look at some of these. Uh, see, so I got like, you know, water gun right here. I did that in, pe in, in pencil first. And then here's some graffiti letters, uh, the letter B. You know what? What else do I got? I got a I got a paint sniper, right there, a paint rifle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I got a couple of characters that I drew in pencil first, and then drew in pen again because I feel comfortable drawing like that. I I don't know. It's up to you. A, a panda, my graffiti artist. Um, let's see what else. What else? What else do I have? I have here uh, Alice, one of my characters. Um, draw it in pencil, pen. I think you get the idea. So it's it's like I draw everything in pencil first, and then I draw it in pen. I just feel so comfortable like that because I like when my lines can come out really clean. It makes me it makes me hold it up more. Again, it's all about the method that you want to use. So go ahead, find a method that you like. If you like using all pen, and you that makes you feel like more of a artist or whatever the case is then by all means, go ahead and use that method. But for myself, and I'm pretty sure like other people who are going to discover their, they're going to discover their own method throughout their journey. They're going to find out real fast that, Hey, you know what, man, it's, it's so it's okay to make mistakes. I don't have to draw in pen all the time. So, okay, get started. Draw when you're watching TV, draw while you're sitting in bed, draw instead of looking at your phone in time, you can think about how to shade and draw a perspective and capture a likeness. None of those things really matter now. What counts is starting the adventure and building your confidence. And while you do this, please be good to yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Focus on making drawing a part of your everyday life. That will be success. And it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see where it takes you. Have fun. <laughs> I hope this was helpful. Okay, so it, it was just mostly philosophical. There was no, there's like no like real like grasp of like what what drawing is. And and again, like you know, he did a great job. I actually feel a little more inspired to want to draw. But honestly, like I'm not gonna go out of my way to go draw a shoe or any of that stuff. Uh, sketchbook school. Um, I've never heard of this guy before. Uh, interesting. Okay, so. Let, uh, let me go ahead and talk about it. Okay. So look at this drawing. Okay. When you look at this drawing, I'm pretty sure a lot of people see like, wow, like everything just looks so nice. It's colorful. Like, uh, it's cartoony and it's, it's very shaped oddly and stuff, whatever the case is. Okay. So every single time when somebody asks me how I learn how to draw or like, what, what do I need to do to learn how to draw like this? You have to understand what you're looking at, okay? You can't just look at this and just say, I want to draw like that and I'm going to get started right now and not know what you're doing. Right here, for instance, okay? You know how many skills I've combined to create something that looks like this? Okay, let's see. Line work. That's our first... Actually, you know what? Let me... Let me see how many skills I can I can pull out, okay? So, uh, let me pull out my notepad. Uh... Like right here, we'll put it right here. Nope. Okay. So uh, skills. Okay. Let's see how many skills we can point out. Okay. So oops, it's supposed to be one. Okay. So line work. That's the first skill. Okay. Let's actually, you know what, w w before we talk about that, let's, uh, figure out all the other skills. Okay. So line work. Okay. Um, uh, Let's see what other skills do we have? Our uh, proportions, pro proportions, proportions. Three. What else? Do, what else can? What else do we see? Uh, 
color work. Uh, what's a good word? I don't want to say color theory. Um, understanding of colors, color shading. Four. Let's see. What else? What else? Um, oh, uh, and I guess you could say proportions. That falls under proportions, but um, shapes. You have to have a good understanding of shapes. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, oh, lighting. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? What else? Uh, I put understanding of color shading or color combination. Let's, let's switch that from understanding to color combination. Combination. And then, of course, uh, we can't forget six. I don't know. Uh, color theory. Okay. Color theory is more of like understanding how the colors make you feel. Okay. That, it's not the same thing as color combination. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? Oops. Let's see. Uh, what else is there? What else is there? What What else can we see? Um, we got lighting. We got line work, proportions, color combinations. Uh, style is not a a skill. Um, what What is it called? Oh, uh the understanding of how an object is supposed to feel or or be like um spatial intelligence i don't, I don't know i'm just gonna call it that just for a lack of a better term intelligence uh let's see there's no textures so um oh oh uh oh wait no um i guess color shading could be one because there's all there's different types of color shadings there's uh, there's all there's a a lot of them but my primary style of shading is cell shading which is uh one one style of like coloring another one is a uh, soft shot uh, soft shading I, I don't really know the shadings i just know i just know cell shading okay because that's my favorite style to do my favorite my favorite way of shading is called cell shading so uh, but i'm gonna just put color shading Actually, in parentheses, cell shading. In case you guys want to know how it's spelled and what it looks like. So, cell shading. I think that's pretty much it. So, there's eight different skills that go into this drawing. Okay, there's line work. As you can see, every single line here is straight. Straight. And, and I'm going to tell you this right now, okay? Sometimes I'll take my time in making these lines straight. Sometimes I'll go over... Uh, I'll make these two lines, like you see these two lines right here, I'll cross them and then I'll erase the top and the bottom right here to get like a perfect uh, 90 degree angle here. As you can see, it looks 90 degree. So uh, right here as well, like I'll just do one one swoosh and I won't even like take my time. I won't even sketch it out like that. I would just do one straight swoosh and then if it looks nice, then I'll leave it. And if it doesn't look nice, I'll erase it and do it again until it comes out the way I want it. So that's how I do my line work proportions proportions are absolutely Im important if you want your 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 drawing to look nice so you want to get like a good proportion so if you're going to draw a cylinder here you want to make sure that it's nice and uh fat and then if you're going to draw like a little cap like here you want to make sure that it, like you draw that in proportion as well like right here you want to make sure that you add like some dimension to it so you're gonna uh make it a little bigger which is um uh, this is a uh, uh, spatial intelligence make this a little bigger and just make sure that the the dimensions of this uh, top here make sense and correspond with the cylinder here so that's uh proportions you have to understand proportions properly this is why uh i know in art class like i don't know in art class if they do this because i've never taken an art class but i would assume that the reason why they make you draw shapes over and over again is because they want you to understand proportions this is why like i'm teaching my nephew right now how to draw and i keep telling him over and over draw your shapes draw your shapes they are absolutely important because everything everything here is a shape like right here you would th this is why um did i put it here I should have put it there. Oh yeah, right here, right here. I did put it. Shapes. Understanding your shape. So this 
is going to be either a rectangle or a cylinder. And then here is going to be a triangle. This is going to be an oval. This is going to be a cylinder. This is going to be another cylinder right here. This is going to be a, a, a square, not a squared, a rounded rectangle, another rectangle here. And then this shape, it starts off as an oval and then you just add the extra, the extra oval there to make it into a palette. Um, again, like another cylinder here, and then you just modify the cylinder to give it this like brush, this like uh, sharp to width to like, then again, narrow uh, uh, dimension. The pot as well, this is going to be a circle. The stars are just a bunch of triangles put together. Uh, you know, so it's, it's not like these are ovals that are just that just been cut. Um, again, everything, everything is a shape. The rainbow here is, is, is circles. You know how I make this rainbow right here? I made it via a uh, uh, circle circles. So understanding shapes, color combinations. When you're looking at this, you have to understand like what colors you're going to use, what colors go well together, what colors. Usually the way you learn uh, the colors is by just picking up a couple of colors that you like a lot. So like for me, my favorite color here, if you look at it closely, what color is the one that, that sticks out the most? To me, it's the pink. The pink is the one that, that stands out the most. And that's because that's one of my favorite colors. The next favorite, my next favorite color is purple, but there isn't a lot of purple here, but like usually I always start off with the pink. That's my favorite color to start off with. And then from there, I would decide what other colors I use. I've always made this a rule whenever I draw. There always has to be some pink in a drawing. And then from there, I always end up like coming out with colors that I like. So usually I like to color, uh, decorate my entire drawing with different colors like it is here because I just like to use a lot of colors. Um, but usually, normally, I will start off with pink and then that's what will determine what colors I use. This castle wasn't even this color. It used to be gray, but because I saw that the pink wasn't, wasn't going well with the gray and the gray wasn't going well with the other colors, I had to change it. I changed it like about 30 times just to get this, this good color. It's like a light purple, like a weird light blue purple. It's very odd. I've never used this color before, but because I was just digging around to see what color would go well, it took me about like 10 minutes to even discover this color. So don't think that you have like this preconceived notion of what colors go well together. It took me many, many hours to discover what colors go well together, many hours. And that wasn't just because I was spending. And when I say many hours, I don't just mean like 10, 72 hours, maybe even 300. No, I'm talking about like at least like 4,000 hours to discover what colors go really well together. And these are the colors that I feel go well together. Get it, get that I feel go well together. Another person will say that those colors don't go well together. Hey, those colors go well together for me. So I like those colors. Go ahead and choose any colors you want and just mess with those colors. Lighting. This is the other scale. Look at the lighting here. Okay. We know that the light source is coming from this side because the way everything is being shunned. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the shading where all the shading is at. All the shading is down here on the, on the, on the lower right hand side, everything is heading this way. And that's because the light is coming from this side. See it? The light is coming from this side It's shining upon the entire castle like this. So that's why you want to have the, you want to understand lighting. If the, if the lighting, if you're going to want the lighting to come this way, that means all your shading has to be the other way. Just think of it this way. The shade, the, if you're going to mess with just one light source, it's just going to go straight down like this middle. If it's on this side, the lighting is going to go this way. All the shadows are going to go this way. If the lighting's here, all the shades are going to go that way. If the shade, if the light source is here, all the shading is going to go downwards, downwards. And if you have multiple lighting, if you have lighting from this side and you have lighting from this side, the, the, uh, depending on which one is stronger, it's going to determine whether what light, where, where the shades are going to be. You know, so something, uh, something to just look for this right here. I actually, you know what? Now that I think of it, now that I look at it, it's actually incorrect. These lights, these right here should not be that color. These should be even lighter, but I, I messed up, uh, mostly cause I just wanted to finish this drawing cause I was so tired of it. But yeah, these, these shadings right here are incorrect. They're supposed to be a, of a lighter color. So I messed up. Um, 
but you'll see it we we everybody makes mistakes dude everybody still makes mistakes there's not one person that doesn't make mistakes in their drawings yeah i made a mistake okay everybody makes mistakes so just want you to know that like if anybody tells you that no my work is perfect there's a mistake in there somewhere there has to be um okay so uh color theory color theory how a drawing makes you feel i knew that using these colors like super bright colors that this was going to produce some like cartoon cartoony style here which is uh what i wanted i wanted to like give off like that very cartoony style so using these bright saturated colors it did the trick at the same time i'm not surprised that it worked out the way it did because i've already been drawing cartoons for so long so i know these colors work really well when it comes to cartoons so color theory spatial intelligence understanding how uh, how something is gonna look um like this trumpet here i honestly don't even know what instrument that is spatial intelligence understanding understanding like like the things like these pencils look super flat they look flat you know but i didn't really care because i wasn't trying to go for like a super like expressive look again like um this is something that i just wanted to finish like even these lines weren't even that well defined because i just wanted to finish the drawing the white doesn't uh, this black does not go with the background i just left it black because again i just wanted to just finish it i was kind of tired of it um uh understanding oh like reels right here you see this reel you see how there's like this film in here and then the film is a part here and then there's another film that's apart from this this one that's like adding uh space let's like uh, adding this spatial element to it uh seeing through this um cavity here to see the other side to see the the black entrance of the castle and then seeing the other side of the of the film that's spatial intelligence uh let's see what, what's another example of spatial intelligence um the film going here behind the castle and just kind of like wrapping around that's another that's another uh uh example of uh, of uh spatial intelligence but at the same time i kind of messed this up it was supposed to go the other way but i don't know uh the film's going back here as well you see how there's like this foreshortening and then it just kind of like gets smaller and smaller all the way into the, it goes into the back that's spatial intelligence as well again there's a lot of mistakes in this drawing now that i look at it but uh yeah um i just like to draw for fun so uh color shading right here uh choose your 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 style of shading if you like uh cell shading like the way i shade this or shade the way you want uh the way this is done is just you just use one one color that's it that's what i like to do i just like to use one shade of color technically this uh, this gives it like a very very like flat there's like no depth to it see if you if you just do one shade which is what i like to do because that's that's what i like to do and i don't really care um you would see that like here um there's supposed to be another shade here because it's 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 already shaded because of the light and then there has to be another shade because of the castle and because of the youtube logo here there's supposed to be another shade but i didn't add that i also didn't add it you see how there's a shading here but there's no shading here i forgot to add a shading there um I forgot to add a, like a little bit of shading here to add depth to it. And uh, there's no shading here, which there should have been no shading here either. So uh, and then like this here is supposed to be this shading is supposed to be like this. And then there's supposed to be like another shading that starts from here. So then we can indicate or here like actually closer to the pencil. So we can indicate that this element is closer to the pencil than the star is to the pencil. So that's that's uh, uh, spatial intelligence. That's another skill. So these are all uh, these are all the skills that um, I use to make this. So if I was you, I'd learn how to practice line work, sit there. The best way you could do this is by combining line work with shapes and having control, knowing and judging when to stop it. So line work, shapes, and then color combination. Uh, get some crayons, get some color pencils, get some markers, and then start like start off. Always start off with the light color, and then work your way with the darker color. That's how you do. Uh, that's how you practice your your shading with markers. And then, uh, depending on what kind of style you want to shade, whether it's soft shading or color shading, uh, you're gonna have to learn those techniques. With color shading, I, it's just one shade. Uh, it's not. It's not too bad. Uh, color theory if you want to understand colors just think about what what colors you think of whenever you think of like certain landscapes or whatever like if you think about like uh winter we'll think of blues whites when you think of hell you think of red oranges when you think of uh, a really hot desert you think of 
orange, light green, uh, black because of scorpions, um, light brown. So it's stuff like that. Think about like that kind of stuff. Think about what style and what whatever you're trying to draw, what colors would it exude? What makes it feel like it would be those colors? So yeah, anyways, these are like skills. All the skills that I use for this drawing, take a good look at them and practice them. Proportions, you practice that with sh with shapes. Line work, you practice by you know, by controlling your your line work, your your lines by swooshing them. Uh, color combination, pick out the colors you like and understand your colors that you like. Uh, lighting, uh, understand the sources of light, how how they uh, interact with each other. If you're gonna have multiple sources of light, understand where the shading is gonna be. Uh, take a a look at, at You, you see that like you see how it's being uh, lit lit by both sides we know that the shade is going to end up somewhere in the middle which is correct to assume because if you look at the middle of my um of my fist it's shaded in except there's like a rim here and then there's a a, a rim a rim here so the shading is going to be right here in the middle so understand your sources of light how you're gonna how it, it affects the drawing and then uh you'll have a much better um understanding as to what to draw, how to draw it, and yeah, hopefully this helps, man. Uh, I know there's a lot of people. Out, I know there's a lot of people out there that want to know how to draw. What is it that they have to work on? This is what I recommend you guys work on. These skills. These skills are absolutely important. So yeah, I've already done enough rant, dude. I, I gotta shut up. This is already a 40 minute video. So yeah. Anyways, yeah, I, that's pretty much it, guys.